Joining us right now on the feat that India has achieved by sending Chandrayaan-3 uh, to the South Pole or the dark side of the moon where nobody has gone before is uh, Thomas Sansueli, Swiss-American astrophysicist uh, from October 2016 until the end of 2022. You, in fact, were the longest uh, continually running associate administrator for the Science Mission Directorate at NASA and it's a pleasure having you uh, on the show, on the channel. I want to begin by asking you, how do you see this huge development that India is celebrating? You know, we are all beaming with pride with the fact that India has sent a mission to the moon and that too to the dark side of the moon, South Pole, where no one, really no one has gone before. Well, I'm so glad to be here and uh, I, I just can tell you how excited I have been and so many of the space community have been uh, and, and just uh, proud of India and excited about that amazing, uh, you know, success, uh, not just for India, but for all of humanity. It's so many firsts and uh, it's particularly exciting to see the engagement of the prime minister here. Uh, you know, I, I wish I spoke more languages than I do, but I watched uh, some of the, the movie screen, even uh, just uh, online uh, recently. Uh, just congratulations to Israel, to India for this amazing success. Well, everybody has uh, been talking about what uh, you know Israel wants to achieve or what this mission is going to try and achieve in the next few weeks and months to come. But there has just been so much conversation about the very fact that this was a very cost-effective uh, mission and that, uh, you know, the analogy with movies, for example, have been drawn like inter Interstellar, for example. Uh, what do you have to say about the way India has managed this in terms of uh, the kind of challenges, the shoestring budgets and uh, the cost uh, that was involved in sending this mission to the moon? Well, it's obviously a record low cost, mm -hmm. right? If you look at the cost of a mission like that, uh, if NASA did it, if the European Space Agency did it or other players, it would be uh, perhaps a factor of 10 higher in many of the areas. And so so you look at this, uh, what it tells you, of course, is just the amazing uh, success that happens when international communities come together. You know, uh, a large fraction of this, of course, is the dedication of the individuals that work on these landers uh, and uh, the dedication they bring to the table. I've met a number of those, you know, and they're uh, they're really, uh, you know, very, very good. And, uh, you know, uh, what I love about them is they came through the defeat, uh, the kind of lack of success in the attempted last landing and did this amazing success for the whole world to see. So for me, that is, uh, besides the prize, you know, mm -hmm. really one of those things that distinguishes this team from others who try once and never try again. You know, what has been uh, that one thing that you think worked for ISRO this time around? Of course, there was just so much disappointment uh, when uh, Chandrayaan 2 crash landed on the moon's surface. But this time around, not just we did soft land on the surface of the moon, which, uh, we, which makes us the fourth country in the world to do so, but also we went to the South Pole. So what is it that worked for ISRO, in your opinion? So I just want to tell you, it started at the very top. I intently observed how the prime minister dealt with the lack of uh, def successful landing the last time. And you remember how we went and hugged the uh, Israel True. director. Mm. And that just tells you and, and told them, let's try again. Right. That attitude is the attitude that is shown here. I think what happened then is that people really looked at the lessons learned and really included everything that went wrong. I mean, frankly, the landing that they did, I mean, it's not just the soft landing. You should look at the accuracy. I think the accuracy mm -hmm. is about 10 times, even 50 times, and some of the factors better than was needed. And uh, they really worked hard to learn from, uh, from, the, from the lessons from that lander, worked really, really hard and exceeded by a lot. So, so they, they didn't just achieve they exceeded uh, all their goals. And, and again, the whole country, the whole world should be proud of that team. You know, my last question to you, sir, has got to do with uh, something that I also asked uh, Professor K. Sivan, since you also mentioned him about Chandrayaan 2 and how upset that uh, mission at the end of the day got him. Those pictures went completely viral when the Prime Minister hugged him. And it was a very emotional moment, not just for the two of them, but for all of us. Uh, you know, I asked him uh, a few days ago when I did interview him about what are you expecting to find? Because we all know that there is a lot of speculation about the dark side of the moon, the sun rays not getting there. Eyes 
perhaps science is there on the dark side of the moon. But he said, we are hoping and thinking that there would be something new. What is it that is being anticipated? What is that secret that uh, everybody is not, in fact, talking about right now? And what are your expectations from the findings when the data is being back to India in, in just a few days from now? So uh, I, I agree with him uh, that this is a very unobserved, very new place of the moon. So kind of imagine landing on a new celestial body and just saying, hey, what's happening here? Uh, the area of the, the southern part of the moon, especially in the, the, the craters that do not see the sunlight, uh, contain, we know from orbital observations, contain water, uh, probably water ice in some areas, but also contain very old gases. So kind of looking at those really will tell us not only about the utility of that ice for future explorations, and of course we're dreaming already about astronauts being on the surface of uh, the moon, including Indian astronauts being there uh, in, in a few years, right? But, but also about the story of the moon and its relationship to the Earth. How many impacts of comets uh, did occur? Is that uh, water there part of the same water that's in our oceans today? Or is it water that came from space, from the sun, or from comets from the outer side of the uh, solar system? Remember, this question is a question that is new. Uh, we, when we were there at the last time on the surface of the moon, we did not know about these, uh, these new components that really fly in the face of the status quo that we, that we thought uh, is the moon. It, it is not, uh, mm. it's, it's a new body and uh, India is gonna discover it now. All right. Uh, Thomas Anseli, thank you so much for your time and thank you for your perspective on that very important story that we, not just in India, but the world is looking at very, very closely. Remember, in the next few days or so, 14 days, when the information is being backed here to Wistro headquarters in Bengaluru, scientists are in fact going to analyze the raw data over weeks and months is what is expected then to give a sense or get really a sense of what really is the dark side of the moon and what are, in fact, uh, the secrets that we've been talking about as far as the South Pole of the moon is concerned.